Hi guys, welcome to uh, the final day of um, Northern Powerhouse 2019 week and uh, it's a little bit darker. We've got that Michael Winterbottom 24 hour party people Phil Gray look going on. Uh, and at least that's what it looks like on the camera itself but I'm sure when it's blown up and watched on a TV screen it's going to be potato quality. But uh, I'm recording this on the Friday, I'm going to be out on the Saturday, and uh, this needs to be uploaded on the Sunday. So, uh, classic scheduling from the Clueless Drinker right there. So, as you can see, we've got a nice little stand, and the beer is propped on a uh, Guinness can, uh, because I've just had a Guinness and then I realised, oh, I need to get that beer. Oh, look at that, the colour's changed for no reason. And I need to get the uh, the beer sorted. I think it's because the, the someone just turned the light on inside. Oh well, I don't care. Quality is not my thing. But after beer review 1000, there's probably going to be a little bit more effort. Probably not. We shall see. Do you really care? I don't know. So yeah, today's beer is uh, the only dark beer that was part of this. So they're ending on a on a bang. And this is a Imperial Maple Brown Ale brewed in collaboration with By The River, who are out of Newcastle, and uh, I think I've already addressed this in a previous video. Uh, when I was talking about the Don Zoko beer, um, I'm sure I referred to them as a like a northwest Leeds area based brewery. No, they're quite clearly a northeast brewery, and uh, Rob from Hop Scene also made it quite clear that I'm a fucking idiot as well. So. just realised I've just drank this beer when I'm supposed to be reviewing this beer. It's a shit show. I've just come in from work well about an hour ago, did my uh, Mikla Beer Club unboxing. And it dawned on me I need to get this beer drunk, so let's let's get it. Let's get it drunk. So this is clocking in at a uh, sessionable 10% ABV vibration. So you're probably going to pick that up and you're probably going to hear the wind noise because I've not actually listened back to the videos that I've recorded outside um, on this series. So, tasting notes. Oh, by the way, artwork comes from. I don't know if I can read that properly. Is that Ruth Jameson? Gorgeous artwork. It's got sort of like a. Do you like space art from the 70s? The Italo, Italo disco sort of artworks with like, you know, likes of space, even though I think they're a French band. Uh, but, you know, like. Um, Every time there's another way. Oh, who's that? Larry Paul something. I wrote that song, but yeah. Italian Italo from like the 70s and 80s. Great music if you like your synth wave sort of stuff. Anyway, how many cultural, pop cultural references can I put in this video to make myself look cool? Uh, well, you're clearly not going to if you say that on camera. Uh, it was done in a purely ironic way. I will assure you. Or I can assure you. So yeah, gorgeous artwork. Lovely looking can. And yeah, this is the first time I'm having anything by by the by the by. By anything from by the River Bruco. So yeah, adjuncts uh, are maple syrup in this. Um, so tasty notes are Newcastle Brewers and Brown Ales are made for each other. Can't read a proper sentence like a 30 year old should be able to. The imperial take on the style uh, features heritage malts, a range of crystals and of course a brown malt or brown roast malt. We then loaded the FE with rich maple syrup for a decadent treat. Uh, brown ales are, are a style that I'm slowly warming to, and uh, I actually like the the colour scheme of this video so far. And the sort of like subtle nuances. And did you like my cultural reference of uh, name dropping Michael Winterbottom's 24 Hour Party People? A masterpiece of filmmaking, by the way. So many different sort of um, styles of filmmaking are in that one film. Uh, it's just a, a marvel, if especially if you're into the you know the Manchester music scene, 
from the 70s up until the mid 90s or early 90s I should say anyway should we just open the beer and see what we get so lovely looking pour so far uh, because it is dark it's going to be hard to get the colour of this beer but beer in the glass then, and it's a really dark sort of chestnutty brown um, there is a little bit of clarity to it I'm going to hold it up to the light it's not completely dense but it's not a really hazy beer and the head pretty much dissipated straight away but it's got like sort of really nice uh, beige pale tan look to it but yeah, it does look really nice. But yeah, brown ales are something that I've slowly started to warm to. Um, still not my favourite style, it has to be said. But I've had some wonderful examples. Um, especially uh, Mr. Brown from Tuol, which I'm, I'm sure is a different style of brown ale. I think that's based on an American style brown ale. This, of course, uh, is taking influence from, well, I imagine so, from you know the, the world-famous Newcastle brown ale. But I'm sure there will be some sort of American undertones in there. Anyway, looks great. Head's gone pretty much already. It's got a lovely level of loininess. But yeah, American style brown ales. I don't know why more breweries don't do to brown ales what they do to uh, Imperial Stouts and just jam pack it full of um, flavorings and stuff like that. Adjuncts, that's what I was looking for. It, it always seems to be like pastry stouts. We're going to make this a gloopy, you know, tiramisu in a can, which I'm all for because tiramisu is amazing. Um, but it's like you could do all of that with a brown ale. And I don't know why more people don't do it. Anyway, enough of the waffling. It might taste like waffles, you never know. Anyway, let's uh, see what we get in the nose. Oh, that's lovely. You're getting that sort of um, mineral aspect of the maple syrup on the nose. You know, the actual tree sap earthiness of it. Yeah, sweet cakey malts coming through. It's like a chocolate sponge cake. There's a little bit of a chewy toffee note as well. No detection of that 10% ABV at all. Even getting like a a slightly unsweetened filter coffee aroma coming out but it's not like a really overly roasty aroma I smell absolutely crackers crackers cracking crackers I think I was thinking of bonkers as I said cracking them but god this video is a mess I've ended on such a shit note but hopefully the beer will rectify that so let's give it a taste cheers guys Ooh. Now that's really sort of like figgy and plummy. And what I love about this is you get the maple syrup, but it's not in your face. As much as I enjoy maple syrup and the decadence of maple syrup, especially on like pancakes and stuff, it does get a little bit overbearing the way it is used in beers sometimes. Sometimes it's just way too much. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's, a, there's a certain characteristic of maple syrup which, if you have too much, it just gets way too much. Not a proper sentence, but you know what I mean. But this, it's just right. You, you know it's in there, but it doesn't linger too much. It's got a very subtle syrupiness, but I would say the body is a little bit lighter than I was expecting it to be. Not that I was expecting it to be like a big gloopy bold. I mean, it wasn't pouring like that, so I knew that going into it. But it does leave a really nice, satisfying oiliness on your mouth. I shouldn't have laughed at that because it's not funny. There's a very subtle coffee with syrup character coming through you know you can get the flavorings but it's coffee you can get like slight walnut character it's a really nice nuttiness but yeah it's like fig roll as well and it's a very subtle uh, sweetened pastry 
you know, that pastry has got like uh, sugar sprinkled on it and it's slightly caramelized. Do you know what this is reminding me of actually? You know those, um, are they Austrian? Uh, but those like um, flaky pastry swirls you get where it's like, it goes, it's almost like a heart shape. Almost very similar to um, a pretzel. That's what it reminds me of. Um, you know what I mean? Where it's like curly and rounded, it like meets in the middle. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. It reminded me of that dipped in a little bit of coffee. Now I want a pack of those and I want a nice coffee. But, but yeah, there's, there's definitely a dark fruity edge there. And I would say it is in line with like a classic British brown ale with some slight adjustments which actually work wonderfully in the context of the beer. Yeah, I think we've ended on a really interesting note with this series, and I've noticed that it's got gradually darker as I've been recording this. Uh, so it's actually showing my uh, pitiful attempt of a moustache a little bit better looking back at the screen. I'm sure that won't be the case when it's on a, an actual computer screen or mobile device when YouTubers compress the shit out of the video. But yeah, that's so easy drinking. I'm just thinking, drinking it now, and it's like there's no detection of that 10% ABV. Aside from the head not really sticking around. I'm getting a little bit of a, an English strong ale, doppel box sort of um, aftertaste. There's a very, very, very subtle warming going down, but it's a comforting warming. And it's getting a little bit chilly. It's not chilly, it's not cold. But there's a little bit of a breeze, and it's just keeping me nice and... The Zen is good right now. So yeah, I think we've entered on a really solid note. Is it blowing me away? No, not really. Um, I know Rob from Hop Scene actually tried this on tap earlier, and I think he really enjoyed it. But then again, he does like his brown ales. So it's very British, but there is some slightly American flavors and aspects to the beer itself which i think work beautifully so in terms of rating then uh, i'm going to give this joe you know what booziness it reminds me of actually almost like a port like a mild port that's what it sort of reminded me of it's like a a doppelbock aged in a port barrel why has no one brewed that beer and if they have give it all to me because I love port I love Doppelbox so if you age a Doppelbox in a port barrel I'm pretty damn sure it's going to come out special this is what it's kind of reminding me of actually interesting it's one of those beers that every sip you take every move you make you'll find something new so in terms of a rating then on the finale of Northern Powerhouse Week which by the way completely worth the money I paid uh, and there are beers in there that I would drink again um, in fact I might do a bit uh, like a bonus video of like ranking the beers from start to fin like lowest to highest but I don't think I'd give it any beer lower than like a, an 8 out of 10 do you know what I mean it's just solid solid brewing from each brewery and I know collaborations aren't everyone's thing but I fucking love collaborations there's just something so satisfying about two different breweries two three four five sometimes you can even get eight ten i mean look at that omnipoyo beer that's coming out soon i love the idea of getting different like flavor profiles from each brewer and different like expertise in each field you know what i mean and then people coming together try something a little bit different sometimes they try something a bit safe but i love collaborations so i'll always i'll always like sort of go off to collaborations um especially when it comes to breweries that I've not tried before I mean is it a full reflection of what that brewery 
bruise on their own, you know, kit and that sort of stuff. Not really, not all the time, but it's so good to actually be able to, to try beers from different breweries. And I think boxes like this are totally, totally worth it. Uh, the the pretentious beer twat inside of me just wishes there was a, a glass to go along with the box. But uh, yeah, this Teku that I bought to drink these beers in, I'm absolutely in love with it. So that means it's going to get smashed within a couple of weeks. So yeah, if you've tried this one, then let me know your thoughts and opinions. If you've got any recommendations uh, from beers by, by the River Bruco, then I'd love to hear some, see if I can get hold of any. Um, if you've been drinking along, uh, fantastic. If you've been watching these videos from start to finish, I do really appreciate it. Um, if you haven't, then I'm going to put the playlist down below so you can check out the previous episodes. Um, even though I've been putting the web shop link down below, I'm not too sure if it is still available. Uh, I'm sure there'll be boxes in bottle shops because I know Mickler Beer Club, the Mickler web shop, has just received um, their orders and I think you can buy them singly as well and you can buy them on tap in, in a few bars so uh, yeah definitely worth giving it a go um, all the beers have been absolutely top notch they really really have and uh, yeah I've got to get to know some breweries that I've, not, I've either not drank from, from a while, for a while or in cases like this I've never had anything from them before and what a cracking introduction uh, to a brewery so 8.5 out of 10 on this one Check out both breweries down below. Check out the playlist. Your thoughts and opinions always appreciated. Can't speak today. And I'm still in my words already. I've only had... I've not even finished this. And I've still got all of this. I'm slow in my words. I don't know what's going on with me. Anyway, I'm going to go before this becomes a completely pitch black video. So I hope you've enjoyed this series. I've really enjoyed drinking these beers. And uh, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to uh, next year's box. And uh, I think aren't left handed giant in charge of uh, the Rainbow Project this year. So you may well see me picking that up as well. Because I just love collaborations. I love, love collaborations. Anyway, that's what it's all about. People coming together, enjoying it, having a good time, sharing the passion like this. And uh, yeah, I just appreciate each and every one of you guys who's watched it. Uh, coming up to a thousand reviews soon. Um, I've got the beer that I want to do uh, Beer Review 1000 up uh, But I'm probably going to space out a little bit And then from that point I'm actually going to shock horror Potentially put some effort in videos Anyway, so you avoid Videos that look like this So anyway no, I do genuinely appreciate it And um, yeah, it's been a pleasure To share these uh, beers with you And uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed the series And uh, hope you come back another day and share another beer with me because I'm on my own and I'm really sad yeah. anyway joking aside do really appreciate it and uh, yeah thank you all for watching and uh, yeah see you guys later cheers